welcome the LSU student athletes, Angel Reese and Fla J. Johnson. Welcome to Albany. And we'll start with questions. Mitchell Northam, USA Today is for the win. Um, Angel, being from Baltimore, I just wanted to ask you about what happened with the Key Bridge and um, sort of, you know, are your, are, are your people okay and kind of, um, you know, if you have any other thoughts about it. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure about what happened. I know a ship crashed into the Key Bridge and um, that is a bridge that my auntie drives over every day to go to work and we drive there to get to her house. So I'm not sure the route that she's taking right now or she's if she's been able to go to work since then, but my prayers are to everyone that um, hasn't been found yet and the ones that are found and are still suffering um, from injury. So I'm praying for Baltimore right now and I hope everything um, gets resolved. Thank you. Howard Meddal at the next. Um, good to see you, Angel. I'm glad your people are okay. Thank you. Um, a question about uh, the game, the matchup specifically. You know, Lauren Betts, obviously a different player from Camilla Cardozo, but share the, the height. And I'm just wondering what you take out of your uh, matchups with Camilla that you're going to plan to use here uh, playing against Lauren Betts. Yeah, I mean, both of them are great post players. Um, luckily, I was able to play with Lauren this summer with USA Basketball, so kind of understanding what she brings. Um, she's a, a, a really skilled post player. Um, I think the difference, Camilla's a right, really great defender. Um, so just being able to understand how I can play both, because they're both, what, 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, so being able to bring them out of the paint and just use my speed and quickness around them is just, I think, is going to be my advantage. Uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Uh, both players, if we can, but we'll start with Angel. Just their ability to pass out of the post as well. And Flage, you know, Middle Tennessee had great guard play that you had to keep in mind, I guess. How much is this team similar, and did that last game prepare you for this? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, they have great shooters on the wing, and it's crazy because we're familiar with most of them. London and Kiki's from my area as well, and Charisma. I played with Charisma this summer as well for USA. So we know these players kind of like the back of our hand and understanding like when we can dig in, when we can double the post, but also when we can get out on the shooters as well. Yeah, I think it's just going to be understanding matchups, um, shooting percentages, where they shoot well from, where they don't. Um, for me, that's going to be a part of my decision making when I'm guarding the post. And uh, we have a good um, game plan that we're working in. And as long as we execute that, I think we'll be fine. Chesa Boucher with NBC 33 in Baton Rouge. Angel, this might be a silly question, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Facing a big like that who's has more size on you. Do you get excited? Does it kind of fuel that fire to let me show you what I can do? Yeah, I mean, of course, people are going to think that I'm not at the advantage, of course, and I'm, I'm not going to be as well against bigger players. But I think I've proven myself a lot this year playing against bigger players. Um, so again, I know my matchup and I can't just take this one matchup and let it dictate the whole game. Being able to not being able to stay out of foul trouble is going to be important. But just knowing my matchup and just being able to focus on it, but also help my teammates as well. Hi, Pat Eaton, Rob from the Associated Press. Angel, there seem to be more big names in women's college basketball this year than ever before, whether that's because of NIL or, or, or whatever. I was just wondering, as one of those big names, is there somebody other than someone on your team in college basketball that you, women's college basketball, that you would pay to see? And is there a player out there that, that you think has kind of flown under the radar that people should be aware of, a, a name that they may not have, they may not know? Um. Oh, Daisha Fair um, from Syracuse. That's a good one. Faje just gave me that one. That's crazy. Um, she didn't get a lot of publicity this year just because of her. I don't know what was the reason, but her scoring was just up there. I think she was what third in scoring this year. Yeah, all time. Um, all time scoring, and she didn't get that for whatever reason. But I think she she deserved that, and she played amazing this year. I played um, with her too this year. We 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 learned with her this um, summer with USA Basketball as well. She's a great player, so. I think the game is growing in a great direction. Um, being able to be a part of this, being able to be a part of history, negative or positive, I'm, I'm really happy where we are right now. And being able to grow the game, I know we'll look back in 40 years and understand that we were trailblazers. Yeah, um, Mike Vopel from ESPN.com. Angel, this is for you. You guys lead the nation in terms of getting to the foul line, and, and, and you've been able to convert there. Can you talk about how big a factor that game of the game that that is for you guys this season and how that might you know be a factor uh, against UCLA. 
Yeah, we get people in foul trouble as best as we can. Um, we're really ag our team is aggressive. We drive to the basket a lot um, and draw fouls as best as we can and get to the line. I think that's our advantage. Um, so being able to do that because we do get a lot of rebounds. I think we are second in the country in rebounds. So being able to get rebounds and putting it back up and getting fouled and getting and ones, I think that's just uh, something that we love we love to do. And coach emphasizes that a lot in practice. Marissa Jacks, Spectrum News. Uh, this is for both players, and we can start with Flaugé. You guys have been here before. You've won the championship. What's harder, winning it last year or trying to get back to it again this year and win it again? Um, I think this year for us is, is, is for me, I would, I'd probably say Angel too, like I kind of know what it takes. You know what I'm saying? So I think the experience for me makes it easier, but our whole team doesn't have that experience. And like, it's like you the defending national champs, whatever, but you know, we got new pieces, you know what I'm saying? And we're, we're just digging deep roots. And I think that our team is just a special team when we all come together. So, I mean, last year was fun and it was kind of unexpected because like we weren't supposed to win, you know what I mean? So now we're just trying to build, build, build on that. Like, of course we don't want to get home, but we're definitely fighting, and it's exciting for me. Like, I got anxiety. I'm ready to play. <laughs> Angel? Um, I would say definitely this year for sure because, ex like she said, the expectations are higher. We have two players on the team that has never played in an NCAA tournament, Anissa and um, Michaela. So understanding, like, experience matters. And last year we had much more experience. And last year I just was like, we're winning and winning and winning. I'm like, okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. And now it's like – Y'all know we win or we going home. And we didn't really have that kind of mindset last year. It was just like, okay, like we're winning or winning. Um, yeah. But this year, of course, anybody can beat you. Um, and understanding, like, everybody wants to beat LSU. And understanding those three letters on your chest mean something. Uh, Nicole Auerbach, The Athletic Angels, for you, um, you know, this time last year, you guys go through that run and, and your life changes and you become a household name. How has the 365 days since then been? Like what, you know, what's, what's the last year been like for you on and off the court? It's been great. Um, not everything has been great, but I, I take it in as a blessing. Um, there, we were just talking to Holly about like, she asked me how I always, how I take everything in, how I stay so strong through everything. And I just try to stay strong for people that don't and understanding like being an athlete is hard, being a student athlete is hard. And especially like where we are right now, where we're household names, we're technically famous, we're celebrities to not just in basketball world, to everybody in the world. Um, just being able to be inspiring, being able to have an impact everywhere we go, people are running and chasing and want autographs. So it's been great. And it's also a downside of the negative stuff too, but I wouldn't want to be in a different place right now. I'm just happy and blessed and just continue to like keep praying for better days and, and great days. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Flage, right here. Yeah. You talked about the experience of last year. What is there one thing in particular that you learned that is help that will be helpful to you this year or that you've passed on to the players who've not been in this through this before? Yeah, um, just let the game come to you. Um, I think when you do that, like, you just play it like it's another game. Like, you know it's win or go home. But you try not to put that pressure on yourself. You know what I'm saying? And I try to tell that to Michaela, our freshman, our star freshman guard, one of the best freshmen in the country, may I add. Um, but I try to tell her, like, just play your game. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I had to learn it. I was so nervous last year. Like, I was fumbling the ball off I my remember. feet. <laughs> In the last year Miami game, like, I was so nervous turning the ball over. But I just told her, like, just just have fun and play and just let the game come to you. And I think that's that's a part of that poise and that experience, knowing that the game could change on a drop of the dime. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to play hard. Candace Buckner, The Washington Post. Flage, this question is for you. Uh, we talk about celebrity. Um, so I'm curious about the intentionality with you and your team last year when you were saying yes to some projects, more than just a sports drink or yeah. you know just rapping. You also chose Experian. And uh, that seems, it seems, I thought that was an interesting uh, choice. So can you tell me about um, what, what was the decision making? And like, I didn't want to just be sports drinks or shoes. I also want to do something that was that, like that. Absolutely. Um, uh, my NIO deal with Experian, I just like, you know, you get the sports drinks, you got the shoe deal, but like, you know, something important is financing and being able to have education behind that. And I think a lot of NIO college athletes don't really understand the education behind 
finances and money and credit and things that we can do. Like I always tell people, like, I want these four years to set up my next 40. You know what I'm saying? Because I won't be able to live this again. So me partnering with Experion, they're just trying to educate teens and people that are in my position about money, about credit. So that NIL deal was definitely important for me just to grow my knowledge in finances, but also other people in my position. Last one. That's a great answer. Um, I'm just curious, those of us that talk to, for both of you, if you can, we get to talk to Kim a lot. Not everybody does. Do you guys ever feel the need to defend her? I mean, me, like, that's my coach. Like, and I love Coach Kim. She believed in me when nobody believed in me. When I was in my recruiting process, every school told me, you got to pick music or you got to pick basketball. But she didn't. She let me be who I wanted to be. She, uh, she, she supported me all the way. So um, I love Coach Moki. She t always tell us, don't defend me, don't defend me. But, you know, you kind of get that from a person that really, you know, have your back. You know what I'm saying? You want to have their back too. Yeah, I feel like the same way. <laughs> Thank you to our student Thank athletes. Thank you. We'll be back with Colorado at 11.05. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Albany. And we'll start with questions for the coach. Right here. Uh, Andrea Adelson with ESPN. Kim, since you made your statement, I think a week ago, I'm wondering, A, if you've heard from the Washington Post, and B, what it's been like just kind of waiting for that story to come out. I did make a statement, and that's all I'll comment on at this time, because all I am focused on is to try to win another basketball game. Thank ne you for asking, though. Next right here. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Uh, not to Nancy belabor, who? Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Not to belabor the point, but from what you have been told or what you have been asked about that the Washington Post story. I'm only here today, Nancy, to talk about the next game. Can I just ask, do you think not that would have about been that. written about a male coach or a coach in the men's game? That's for you to write. Up here in the front. Let me just remind the members of the media that the question should be, uh, about the upcoming game. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Go ahead. Hey Coach, Doug Feinberg, the AP. If I can ask the big picture women's basketball question, which hopefully doesn't offend the uh, rules of the NCAA, you've been around the game for a long time, playing in it and coaching in it. Can you talk about the growth of the game that now the viewership, the attendance, this region has some very big names in it, including yourself, Angel, Caitlin, and a few others. Just what you've seen in the growth of women's basketball from your time you first got involved in it to now. Doug, I'm a lot younger than you want people to believe. No, I have been around a long time, since I was 23 years of age, and I have seen a lot of wonderful things in this game. I don't know that I have ever seen anything like now. And I keep asking myself why. What is making it this way now? I don't know that I have the answer. I have lots of thoughts, but uh, it's, it's wonderful. It's off the charts. Uh, we have people watching our game that never gave a flip about women's basketball before, and I love that. Second row right here. Thank you. Hi, Coach. Talia Goodman with the Next Tapes. Another kind of big picture basketball question, but just curious on your thoughts on the transfer portal opening up the day after Selection Sunday. I know a lot of coaches that have made the tournament have spoke about the fact that they think they should be able to just focus on the postseason. Well, I do just focus on the postseason. That's what you have assistance for. Um, obviously, it's the rules, and um, my coaches work it hard. It's like free agency in baseball. You better open that computer and see who's in the portal. I don't. Uh, it's the same way with uh, NIL. I don't deal with NIL. We have people that do that. I just want to focus on X's and O's and coaching basketball. Front row here and then left. Hi, Kim Patty. I'm from the Associated Press. A logistical question for you. Can you talk about what it's like with these new super regionals um, in terms of locker room changeovers and knowing when to get here and shoot arounds and is there something you would change and is there something they learned from last year that is helping this year? Uh, I, um, last year was the first year I think wasn't it? Eight teams have to be accommodated for in Albany. 
when you bring in eight teams, do you have eight hotels that are all of equal value, you know, that are all the same? Probably not. I don't know how many cities do. That's a concern is that when you get to a sweet 16, some people won't ever go past a sweet 16. It's a big deal. And so are the accommodations, whether it's food, hotel, anything, are they all going to be of equal, what's the word I'm looking for? Equal value, I guess. I, I get concerned about that. Is that hotel as nice as the next hotel? And I know we do seating. The seed, the higher seeds get the nicer hotels, but maybe we'll reach a, a place one day where we can give the bids to people who can say, here are our eight hotels and they're all great. That doesn't mean they're bad hotels, but I think kids look at stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, the bids go out before, I don't know how many years ahead of time. Are we getting enough people bidding on the women's game? And maybe that's why one is where it is and one is where it is. I don't know. That would be an NCAA question. I know with the personalities and the, ra the ratings and, and how good the game is right now, maybe we will get um, more, more bids to host. Um, do I like the eight? Um, I'm pretty good with what we used to have. I'm pretty good with you know what we had. Uh, but that doesn't mean having eight in one spot is bad. Um, but just make sure that if you're going to have that many in one city, that everything is pretty equal. Howard Bagdahl at the next, Tim. Um, two things on just strategy from game tomorrow. First of all, um, I'm wondering, for Angel to have gone up against Camilla Cardozo, how much does that inform you know, what you're going to be using uh, as strategy for her with Lauren Betts? And then just... In terms of the pace of the game, you guys played real fast this year, which I know is not typical for you guys. Is that something you're looking to do to push the pace more against UCLA, which was more middle of the pack? Well, I, I would correct you there. We play fast. I want to run. Uh, does playing against Cardoza help us with bets? Height-wise, absolutely. They're, you know, they're tall. And so Angel has, has guarded Cardoza numerous times in the SEC. That will help. Uh, they're two different kind of players in a lot of ways, but the height obviously is a, a, a big common deal between both, uh, amongst both of them. Uh, Scott Rabelais with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Uh, Kim, how, how well did, are players today, you think, uh, able to equip to deal with distractions? Or how well are they able to focus? And your team in particular, how, how well do you think you all are able to deal with that because there's a lot of stuff that goes on you know with these players and the, the fame they have and that sort of thing are you talking about social media and media uh, in general in general yes I, I'm not on social media I don't know but my team seems to be as focused as they were when we won it all last year I think that's um, what you do in film work and on the court and all that stuff now I don't walk behind them and say how many times you turned your phone on today or anything it's, it's the world they live in, you know. Um, we're focused. I mean, it's – I don't know if I can answer that for them because I don't know what they do in their personal life when it comes to all that stuff. Go ahead. Uh, Eden Lassie, Yahoo Sports. Um, you talked a little bit about the post matchup, but what specific skills does Lauren Betts have that you guys are going to try and neutralize? Well, the first skill she has is not a skill. She was blessed with height. Uh, Lauren is, um, she's, she just has post moves at a young age. You know, she's, she's pretty young. And uh, she's got good guard play around her to where when she gets double teamed or gets in trouble down there, she's got outlets and people to throw it to. Um, she's very skilled. Um, so I could give you a million great things about that young lady. I recruited her out of high school, and um, she's just good. She's just really good. Reed Darcy with the Advocate in Baton Rouge. Coach, I'm curious, you know, over your career, over all the NCAA tournaments you've been to, have you changed anything about how you approach over all the tournament trying to get back to the Final Four? Well, you mean strategy-wise, X's and O's-wise, or preparation, or what? In general, has anything changed at all? 
I, I think you live and you learn. I think we mature as coaches and uh, things that you used to do, you might not do anymore. I think each team is different in how you approach it, what they need and what they don't need. Um, coaching is coaching, but um, each team is different. And so you might do something a little bit different this year than you did 10 years ago. Um, you just have to go with your gut. And I've always had a good read of my team. And um, you don't just get stressed over it. You don't overcoach. You don't overthink it. Go play ball. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Um, following up on Lauren Betts, she had said that she played with Angel um, for Team USA last summer. Does that help Angel or you guys having a familiarity, the fact that the two have played together in addition to seeing them on film? You're telling me something I didn't even realize. I didn't, you know, we don't, you know, Angel hasn't mentioned it. I never even thought about it. Uh, we're just in the film room watching games of who they've played this year. And um, unless she's mentioned it to uh, any of our assistant coaches, you know, I, I can't tell you that I've ever had a conversation on what she does good or does bad or how I'm going to guard her. Uh, Angel just listens to scouting reports and uh, chimes in if she sees something uh, on the scouting report that she doesn't understand or on the film that she thinks would be better, but hadn't even mentioned that. Corey Diaz with the USA Today Sports in Louisiana. Kim, in your experience, how much I guess stock is the NCAA tournament in terms of players that you have that are weighing the option of potentially uh, entering their name into the WNBA draft. Is there, do you, in your experience, do you have scouts and, and, and GMs that need to talk to you about how they play during the tournament down the stretch? Does that factor in at all? Most of the, I don't talk to a lot of scouts. I think they probably talk to my coaches, but I don't even know that. If they do talk to them, it's personal relationships and asking about things. Um, now, scouts will call me. Um, when I say scouts, I'm talking about WNBA coaches. And they'll ask me things throughout the course of the year. Um, but yeah, I don't know that it, at this point, I, I really don't think competitive athletes think about the next level. I think they just, they want to win. They're in the moment. They're enjoying themselves. Uh, and they know that when it's all over, they'll have a decision to make, come back or go. But we don't sit around and talk about it. I've said many times through the course of the year what I thought Angel and, and Haley would do, but we, we don't talk about all that. That'll take time. That'll take place when it's all over. Uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Um, <clears throat> UCLA was talking about watching Carolina tape and Cordozo the way that they played against you. And uh, I, was just I was just wondering, having just played middle and having played Carolina, having talented bigs, but also dangerous guards. How much does that help your prep? Well, if everybody looked at the Carolina tape, we'd all be scared because they're that good. Um, you know, everybody's good, Michael. At this, at this stage, this is the most wonderful thing. We talked about how the game had changed, Doug. The game has changed because of the transfer portal in a lot of ways, in a good way. Now, the portal hurts a lot of coaches and can devastate your program, but you also gain. But what I'm thinking is happening is you're seeing parity in the women's game because of the transfer portal. And you've got 16 teams here. They're good. They're good. And I don't know, going all the way back to when I was a player, if we ever thought there were more than one or two or three teams that were going to win it all. And now you really don't know. We're a classic example of that. Last year, nobody thought we would win a national championship, but we did. And um, I like that. I like the fact that um, we all have to stay on our toes and uh, recognize that there are more than two or three teams anymore that just dominate the women's game. Last one. Chessa Boucher with WVLA in Baton Rouge. Coach Mulkey, everybody's going to look to the post play. But how important do you think guard play, especially you being a former guard, is going to be in this matchup? Well, you're going to look at post play because post play is going to be the 
taller p players out there, and both teams use their post. Uh, but you don't think UCLA is loaded at every position? Look, they're supposed to win the game. You know, they're the two seed, we're the three seed. But we're not going to go away. We're going to fight hard. Um, but they're, they're more than post play. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're good. And uh, we're not just focusing on Lauren Betts and their post play. Um, she, she averages, I think, nine shots a game. Somebody's got to be shooting those other shots. And so that answers your question, Chessa. They're good at all positions. They have depth coming off the bench and uh, probably more productive depth than we have had of late. Um, but they're good. Thank you, Coach. Uh-huh.